Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Brianna Isbell. But first, we have a verdict in the trial of John Edward James. James was found guilty on three counts of first degree murder for the deaths of 44 year old Wilona White, 18 year old Talmadge Holmes Jr., and 14 year old Jaden White. James was handed three consecutive life sentences. El Nino is officially back, and that means the heat is about to be turned up. Noah says that temperatures could be on the warmest record this year and well into next year. Vanessa Mishania explains to us what El Nino is and how it fuels extreme weather. El Nino is here and it's earlier than usual. On Thursday, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration issued an El Nino advisory saying the phenomenon in the Pacific Ocean is forming a couple of months early. NOAA says that, quote, gives it room to grow. NOAA says that there is a 56% chance it will be strong this year and a 25% chance it will reach supersized levels. Uh, El Nino refers to a situation in which the tropical Pacific is in a um, a weird state. Nick Bond is a climatologist for the state of Washington and a research scientist at the University of Washington. He says this summer is expected to be warm and dry in some areas of the country, but the true impact of El Nino may not be felt until the winter, spring, and next summer as the snowpack in northern parts of the country could be very low. We see exceptions to the rule and so forth, but there is definitely a relationship between El Nino and what happens around the world, not just in the U.S., but um, other places with uh, really serious ramifications. While northern tier states could see much drier conditions, southern California and the Gulf Coast may see more rain. Typically, El Nino conditions lead to a calmer hurricane season in the Atlantic, but warmer than normal waters there could still fuel another intense hurricane season. Right now, the Atlantic is, is on the active side, and so that, again, kind of stacks the deck for um, maybe a little bit more of, um, you know, problems of that sort. One good thing about knowing about El Nino ahead of time, says Bond, is that we can prepare and brace ourselves for potential big impacts. Learning how to deal with these kind of year-to-year -year changes in the weather and climate is probably a good practice uh, in dealing with the effects of climate change. That was Vanessa Mishanya reporting. Now let's get to our first morning weather with Kyler Diggs. Kyler, can you tell us a little bit more how El Nino will affect us here in Tucson? Yeah, exactly. So in a typical El Nino year during monsoon, it's kind of a hit and miss for us. Sometimes it can benefit us a little bit, but most of the time we see a little weaker monsoon during an El Nino year. One of the reasons for that is, is we do get more hurricane activity over the eastern Pacific more frequent, but they're usually not as strong of storms. And a lot of times we won't see that moisture working its way into southern Arizona. But with the frequency of storms going up, there is a better chance that some of that moisture could be drawn up here. But with an El Nino, it usually means a little later start to the monsoon as well, which we really haven't had that strong heating either. So this all could start to be adding up for a little bit of a late start on monsoon. Certainly don't see any indication of monsoon out there today. A lot of blue sky. High temperatures so far have been in the 80s and lower 90s. Once again, we've really been enjoying this cooler weather, but that is about to come to an end. We turn now to Florida and the unprecedented federal criminal charges against former President Donald Trump. He will be arraigned in federal court tomorrow. Trump has been indicted on 37 counts accused of manhandling national defense documents. Chris Stewart has more from Palm Beach. Mar-a-Lago is a place where many of the former president's most diehard supporters gather, whether he is in town or not. Within the first five pages of this 49-page indictment, special counsel Jack Smith lays out that Mar-a-Lago is not just a private residence for the former president, but this is a social club that held more than 150 events between the time the former president left office in January 2021 in August of 2022, tens of thousands of people without security clearance coming through this property during that time. And that's what makes these images so concerning. When you see the boxes on the stage in a ballroom or stacked high inside of a bathroom. Over the weekend, supporters of the former president, allies of the former president standing by his side, 
But former Attorney General Bill Barr had this to say about the indictment. Even half what Andy McCarthy said, which is, is if even half of it is true, then he's toast. I mean, it's a it's a pretty it's a very detailed indictment. Uh, and it's very, very damning. The former president responded to that statement by his former attorney general with a post on Truth Social, his social media platform, calling Barr a disgruntled former employee. Now, the former president is expected to travel to Florida today. He'll be staying in Doral at his golf course there west of Miami tonight and working with his attorneys in preparation of this Tuesday court appearance. As far as here at Mar-a-Lago, we are expecting supporters over the next couple of days to gather uh, for the former president. This was the scene over the weekend, about 50 of his supporters arriving here outside of Mar-a-Lago. It will be interesting to see what the scene will not just look like here over the next couple of days, but of course in Miami ahead of that Tuesday court appearance. Chris Stewart, Scripps News, Palm Beach, Florida. World News Tonight with David Murr is next with more on the Trump indictment, plus the latest on the collapse of a highway overpass in Philadelphia. That's at 4.30 right after our show. While well, a new grant for Cochise County nonprofit is allowing organic produce to be more available to the people in the area. Equine Hope Ranch and, re and received a $12,000 grant to expand it locally. It's locally grown produce in the county. The money will be used to purchase stainless steel sinks and tables for food preparation. This will allow them to meet the county guidelines to distribute their products to local food banks. Right now, the ranch produces thousands of pounds of fruits and vegetables. The produce is then sold at farmers markets in Sierra Vista and Bisbee. The ranch provides services and hands-on experience to those with disabilities, including autism, so they can have the skills to be on their own. Helps us because of if we need to grow our own things, we have the experience and the knowledge and stuff that we need. It will take a few months for the team to set up the new equipment and be awarded their food handling certificates from the county. New guidance drops the breast cancer screening to 40 years old after years of recommendation that women should start screening at the age of 50. Nine on your side's Brooke Chow shares her conversation with a local breast cancer survivor who's using her story to encourage early detection. November 15th, 2006. A date etched in Terry's mind forever. The day the words breast cancer changed her life nearly 17 years ago. You can empathize when someone else is going through it, but until you particularly hear those words and go through that yourself, you just don't have that understanding of this is what the walk is. The walk of advocacy and awareness to bring attention to early detection. With the recent age recommendation changing for breast cancer screenings, moving from 50 years old to 40, it was no surprise to Terry because it saved her life. The detection of screening, the key to survivorship, is early detection. And it should have never been 50, ever. Because age does matter. You wait until a patient is up in age, the chances of cancer are greater. Period. The new guidance comes just after statistics show higher rates of breast cancer among women in their 40s, even increasing 2% from 2015 to 2019. So by catching it earlier in your 40s, then you have a chance, better chance, and longer life 